Right, we are on the home stretch. So here comes question three. The point P has position vector OP, and then it gives you all the numbers. Point Q and its position vector, point R and its position vector relative to an origin O. And then they say there's some point S that makes PQRS a parallelogram. Find the position vector of that point S. So let's think about this for a second. You got P, Q, and R, and they're locked in place. And then as you move S around, um, you can put S in a particular place that makes P, Q, R, S a parallelogram. So what is the S that will do that? Now, um, we've already said this once before for a mechanics question, but here I'm going to say it again because different context, even though this, the point is the same. The errors that crept in for this question, almost all of them would have been easily solved by a basic diagram. And you're gonna see how basic my diagram is in a second. But people didn't draw a basic diagram and it would have taken them all of like 15 seconds, um, but their lack of that diagram just sent them completely down a rabbit hole or left them um, kind of easily able to you know, make mistakes because of all of the arithmetic errors that sort of creep in and the lack of a diagram, you know, short circuits your ability to work out that you did something wrong, okay? So let's have a look at how I would set out a very simple diagram for this. This is question three and we're on part A. So we're told that there is a parallelogram of some sort. So I'm gonna draw myself a parallelogram. Um, I'm gonna draw it something like this. That'll do, okay? Um, I know I'm cheating that I can draw perfect parallelograms on this app, but you don't need a perfect parallelogram to do what I'm about to do, which is the important part. Uh, I'll leave it down there. So I'm told um, that it's a PQRS parallelogram. So I'm gonna put P here, Q here, R over here in the top right hand corner, and then S, right? And P, Q, and R, the coordinates are provided to me, right? So I know that P is at three comma two comma three, Q is at negative four comma one comma four, uh, and R is equal to three comma four comma negative three. All right, now um, S is the unknown, right? I don't know where it is, so I'm gonna call it X comma Y comma Z. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you, um, yeah, I, I think it probably would be plausible for me to show you a couple of ways to do this, um, but I, I'm, I'm gonna start off first by what's the most um, straightforward way, I think. So. As I mentioned, right, you've got this parallelogram here and you want to say, well, where is S going to be? And you want to use the properties of a parallelogram, okay? So the easiest thing, for instance, is to make a comparison between, say, um, two opposite sides like this one here and this one here. These two sides of a parallelogram are since they're a parallel, it's since a parallelogram, they're parallel. Not only are they parallel, they're equal in length, right? So in magnitude speak, we would say they share the same direction and magnitude, which means that they are the same vector, essentially, right? So therefore I can say that uh, this vector here starting from S going to P is the same as the vector starting from here, R going to Q. And this is the first problem that crept in. Um, some people said, yeah, I'll, I'll compare these two sides or you can compare the other two sides, it doesn't matter. Um, but what happened was you got your direction mixed up, right? So you might have said, uh, I'll do this in alphabetical order. So I'll go P, S uh, in the first instance and then I'm gonna go R, Q in the second instance because I don't know, you were confused. Uh, now in this case, you can see by my vectors, while the magnitude is still the same, the length of these vectors is identical, the direction doesn't match anymore. They're going in opposite directions, right? So therefore, if you equated these, you would have got the wrong X, Y, and Z because you're comparing the wrong two vectors, right? Um, other students still, they compared the wrong two sides. So they might've compared like this one and this one, which were adjacent, not parallel, not opposite to each other. And there were even some students who compared like SQ to, um, PR, which they're just, they're diagonals. Like, what are you gonna do with them? I suppose you could do a dot product, but boy, is that excessive, because then you define that length. It was just pointless, okay? So, like I said, this would have been easily solved for your, the problem would have been easily avoided if you just drew a diagram like so. So this is the way that I thought was the most natural to solve it. If indeed, um, SP equals QR, um, I can work out what SP and, um, uh, sorry, not QR, it's RQ. 
RQ, that's what I just showed on that diagram right there. If indeed these are the same, then I can just do this in column vectors and do all the comparisons, right? So if you have a look here, right, um, you can see X is gonna match with three, Y is gonna match with two, Z is gonna match with three. So that SP vector is going to be, I could state it as um, X take away three, Y take away two, and Z take away three again. And I'll do the same thing for RQ, right? Just be mindful for your negatives here. So you could go say, for example, three take away negative four um, is going to be plus four. Uh, and then I'm just looking across there, it's going to be four take away one, and then it's going to be negative three take away four. Uh, and you can see here, um, I can just, number one, simplify all of these. They're very, the arithmetic is very simple. And then I can equate the X's, equate the Y's, equate the Z's. And I'm done, right? So I'm going to say um, equating components. And I'm just going to do them one at a time. X minus 3 is equal to 7. So therefore, X equals 10. That's it. Wasn't hard. Uh, y minus 2 is going to be 3. So their Y is going to be 5. And then lastly, uh, Z take away 3 is going to be... Negative three, minus, uh, that's the negative, oh, so what am I doing? Minus seven, so I'm gonna add uh, three to both sides, which gives, which gives me negative four. So therefore, uh, what's the point? S is at, let's see here, 10 was my X, five was my Y, and negative four was my Z. Finished. Uh, they in fact should have been some of the easiest three marks in the entire paper. Um, so you needed to make sure you didn't get the order wrong uh, and make sure you knew what you were doing with your, with your diagram, okay? Now, I will show you, as promised, another way to solve this, um, and I'm also going to show you why I didn't like it. Um, it's clever in a sense, but it's also, I mean, so many of the students who did this um, made errors, um, and very obvious errors, and you'll see why in a second once I unpack the method, why the errors emerged. People said things like, uh, you know, uh, what was a classic one? I think someone said something like, SR is equal to P. Q. Is that another way of saying it? S R. Yeah, here we go. So here's S R, and that is indeed equal to P Q. So you start off, it's all fine. Okay. Now from this point here, people then kind of went vector crazy a little bit, right? So they said, oh, the way to say S R, if I do that in vector notation, is O R take away O S, and uh, the same thing for the right hand side is O Q take away O P. So that's all fine. I can then um, add OS to both sides and then subtract everything on the right hand side from both sides. So I get OS equals, uh, let's think about this. So I'm going to get OR take away OQ plus O. P. Okay, that's what you get. And this result, I should clarify, is exactly right. Let me prove it to you. If I took this uh, diagram over here. Okay, let's just lay it here. Okay, so if I say there's some O, some origin somewhere, right? So let's place it, say, um, use another color. Let's put the origin, say, somewhere like here, okay? Um, what is OR minus OQ plus OP? Think about what this is going to be equal to, okay? So if I do OR, OR starts from O and goes all the way up to here, ta-da. So there is OR. Uh, what is minus OQ? Well, if you think about this carefully, OQ is going to look like, let's choose another color here. So I'll make it a little bit thicker so it's easier to see. OQ is going to go up this way, okay? But um, minus OQ is going the opposite direction. So if I take this um, and duplicate it over here, you can see OQ heads upwards, but minus OQ heads downwards. So there's minus OQ. And then um, I'm going to do plus OP. So where's OP? OP is going to be here in this corner from the origin all the way over to P, like so. Um, and I'm doing it in the same direction. So there's OP. So if I now duplicate this, there's OP again. Ta-da! You can see, lo and behold, it lands you on S. There it is. There's OP. So you can see, OP, it's a bit of a weird way to go about it, starting from my origin right there, um, if you do OR minus OQ plus OP, sure enough you get to S and you should have the right answer. 
Here's the problem. When you were doing this, when you're doing this working and almost everyone who tried any approach even vaguely like this fell into this trap. Sometimes you fell into this trap more than once and it was really upsetting to read. Um, you're gonna have a series of, oopsie daisy, a series of negatives and double negatives in here when you do, when you evaluate this line, okay? Um, you're gonna have negatives and double negatives. You've gotta keep track of all of them. You're trying to compare the X's and then the Y's and then the Z's and almost every time you just were plagued by arithmetic errors that are very, very hard to spot. So you know when we talk about like there's multiple ways to solve a question, right? Sometimes we say, what's just the fastest way, right? What has the least lines of working? Um, other times, like here, what we want is not necessarily the fastest way. Like if you have a look at these lines of working, they're quite long as compared to this. Some people might say, oh, this is much more succinct, right? But this particular form, it just leans you into making human errors and you are doing this as a human being. So this method that I, I showed above is much less error prone than this one. The number, of, if you go through your paper and you count the number of double negatives that you made a mistake on, um, uh, you'll probably cry a little bit because they're simple things. Like we know it doesn't mean you don't understand how negative numbers work. What we also equally clearly know is that your working memory was overloaded, concentrating on harder parts like 3D vectors or integration by parts or whatever it happens to be. And then you tripped up on the simple stuff. So I always like to say it's the cognitive equivalent of forgetting to pack your toothbrush when you go on an overseas trip um, on an, you know, to another country or even to somewhere just a little further afield. You know you needed your toothbrush. Of course you needed it. Why did you forget? The answer is you were concentrating on your passport and your money and your flight and all the rest of it, right? So your working memory was overloaded and you forgot something simple. So please make note of that lesson. It never goes away. Uh, they're not silly or careless errors. They are things that we can actually avoid if we choose our methods more carefully.